It's the Dali Catch. This came out in 2016. Why did they call it the Dali Catch? Personally, I think it's because they thought it was a catchy name. Anyway, this is the Generation 1. Came out in 2016. This is the Dali Catch. Can you, can you come up with, what would they call it after Dali Catch? It's the G2, it's the Gen 2. So, the Gen 1, the Gen 2, the Dali Catch. Well, why is that interesting? It's interesting because when we talk about high-end speakers, this is one that comes up a lot. Retail is normally 330 quid. Uh-oh, what if mom finds out? Uh, that's not cheap, is it? And on offer at the moment, when I check today on Amazon, 299 pound, it's almost a bargain, isn't it? I'll tell you why it's a bargain. Why is that out? Because, do you know what, what Hi-Fi said? The, the well-known well impartial high-end reviewers of all things audio. What Hi-Fi said, the Dardy Catch G2 is simply, it's not complicated, it's simply the best sound per pound, almost sounds like, my pound for pound world champion, doesn't it? The sound, for, are they nicking my catchphrases? The sound per pound portable Bluetooth speaker on the mark, the best, simply, the best, simply the best. I mean, let's, let's have a think about this for a second. This is it. What Hi-Fi, they have a lot of audio gear go through their hands. Purely coincidence that a lot of those gears that are going through their hands are also people who advertise with them. The best sound per pound portable Bluetooth speaker on the market right now. That was 2021. It's only last year. Both comfortable in your home and on the road. Comfortable. I mean, they're even talking like audio people, aren't they? No, they're not. Because comfortable is not a word I even hear, hear from the audio. I don't hear audiophiles, audiophiles coming on my channel and saying, well, that's a very comfortable speaker. No, because they don't work for water hi-fi. And hear what they, they, they say, excellent clarity. Impressive bass weight. This is going to be a boombox. And they say, class, classy. Oh, it's classy, isn't it? Classy build and finish. Finish. Well, I would hope when we get the speaker, it is a finished speaker. <laughs> so that got me, interest, got me interested. Also because I hear a lot of people recommend when they talk about, well, I want something a bit audio file. I want something a bit hi-fi. I don't want one of them sound cores. Not like Alan Ross who works for them. Who doesn't work for them, by the way. Hi, Alan, it's Soundcore here. Would you like to work for us? No, I wouldn't. So it's time to go hands on, not just with the Dolly Catch G2, but I'm going to compare it with the Dolly Catch G1. Not really the G1, it was just the Dolly Catch. As you can see on the front, we have a 90 millimeter woofer, we have passive radiator, we have tweeter. <laughs> You, I can hear you now, you're getting really, really excited. It's got a tweeter, therefore it must be fantastic. Not just a woofer and a tweeter, but it's got it on the back. It will have it mirrors on the back, what it's got on the front. Now here's a clever bit. So there's a tweeter there, woofer there, and on the back, it's the other way around. Tweets a woofer, so you think, well, that means you're gonna get your left and right separation. But no, on the first gen, if you've got it the right way around, so that the, the Dali on the handle, and by the way, the handle is really clever. It's actually quite stiff on my uh, latest one, but you can push it out and then you can, you can carry it on the handle and then you can push it back in like that. And oh, it's out the way now. Wish we could do that with the motion boom. So you're thinking, have it the right way around. You're gonna hear right there and left there. Cause that would make sense, wouldn't it? And on the gen one, that's exactly what happens. You do, you do hear some stereo because you can actually hear what's coming from the back. So you do get a left and right. <laughs> but either they've uh, reversed the wiring by mistake on mine, or they've just gone bonkers because it's actually the other way around. So now you have to turn it the wrong way around. So the dial is the wrong way around. The EQ button's there. And then got right and then I've got left. So it's a 360 degree speaker. Not just that, it's got Neodymium magnets. That means it's going to be so light. It's going to be like a feather. Well, we just know got neodymium magnets. It's going to be lighter oh, than if they had a normal ferrite magnet. These are 50 watt speakers. These are not power light speakers. 50 watts. If they really put out 50 watts, I'm expecting, and after what Hi Fi said, got fantastic bass. I'm expecting something fantastic. Let's have a look at what else they say about this. Incredible. 
catchy name, Dolly Catch Speaker. It's got a leather handle. You can pull it out, you can push it back. Flashback. You can push it out and then you can, you can carry it. It's designed in Denmark. Wow, it's a Denmark speaker. Oh, no, it's made in China, but they like to say designed in Denmark. I mean, you could live anywhere and say you designed it. They might as well say designed it at Alan Ross's house. They even tell you, unusually, they tell you where the crossover is. 2,300 hertz, 2.3 kilohertz to you is where they got the crossover and an easy to replace battery. I have to give them the dues. It really is. It's very easy to pry the cover off. Um, there's a little gap where you put your prizer tool in. It just lifts off. That was very nice. Then you only got to undo the two screws. Inside there is the battery. That is a nice design element. I'll give them a thumbs up for that. Did I hear someone say SBZ codec? No. Aptex on the Gem 1, Aptex HD, if your device supports it, on the Gen 2. They've, they've upped the game. They're saying, we are hi-fi, not just a lifestyle, clearly designed speaker, and we're gonna charge you more for that. But hey ho, Aptex HD, we're not messing about. Do you know what else they improved from version one? The little feet they had on there are now well improved. And they're bigger, the bigger rubber feet. So that's really good. They've got two EQ, no, that hasn't changed. The Dali Catch is all about having two EQ modes. It's very easy to change the, the EQ. There's a little button there with three sliders, meaning it's an equalizer. And it goes from what they call the clear, I think it's supposed to be the balance mode, to the warm. Well, if you really like a boom box, here we are, you can have a warm mode. In our frequency response testing, we'll see exactly what they do. I think the options of the colors are slightly different on the Gen 2. Do note that neither of them are a USB-C. Uh, it has a barrel charger, but that barrel charger will give you 42 watts of charging power. The woofer is no ordinary woofer. It is in fact an inverted membrane woofer. And that means in a small little box like that, or box is it? Well, I don't know, almost handbaggish type of container. Uh, you can get a bit more excursion out of it by that clever shaping of the membrane diaphragm to you. And it's again, no ordinary woofer. It's not a titanium driver. I know you'd get very excited if I said titanium, but it is an aluminium woofer. So it's also a metal woofer. There will be pluses and minuses to whatever materials they use. And it's a soft dome tweeter. <laughs> Let's have a look at the frequency response measurements. Dali Catch generation one. Clear EQ mode. This high end speaker has this bass hump at 40%, and by 60%, it's totally missing. And even the shape of the bass is changed again by the 80%. And then for the next 20%, it doesn't really go that much louder. We can see big old 2.5 kilohertz peak. It does extend well out to 20 kilohertz. And outside of 40% volume, there's no bass below 150 hertz. Comparing Gen 1 with Gen 2, Although the tuning is overall the same, there are little tweaks, but most notably, it goes a little bit louder. So if you AB between these speakers, that's gonna favor a Gen 2 and a quick AB listen. Gen 1, warm mode. Again, that bass all over the place, isn't it? Big bass compensation, 40%. By the time you've hit 60%, it's a complete swap around with, now it's all upper bass dominant, with a tiny bit of deeper bass, and actually disjointed between the two, and then, over 60%, <laughs> forget deep bass, it's all upper bass again, even though it's so-called warm mode. Still got that big 2.5 kilohertz peak. And between the Gen 2 and the Gen 1, as I mentioned before, goes a little bit louder on the Gen 2, but for basically the same tuning. If we overlay them, you can see there's little tweaks between Gen 1 and Gen 2. Most notably, the dip around 1800 hertz. It's now smoothed out on Gen 2. Bass is the same. A little bit stronger in those upper bass, low and mids. A little bit stronger in the high end. But a bigger dip now around the 1 kilohertz mark. The overall signature, though, is the same. Same story in warm mode. Overall signature the same. But there are tweaks to differentiate the sound a little bit. It looks to me like so-called clear mode. As I've often, well, always, <laughs> I think up to now, always, what they call the clear mode is a bass cut. Not balanced at all, but it, yes, it'll be clear. I would say that's the audio book mode. Doesn't sound so catchy though, does it? As clear mode, warm mode is the balance mode. 
It's not the bass heavy mode, it's the normal bass mode, but depending on the volume you listen to. So we're gonna have to do a test. I would normally do a 50 and 75% test, but you know, the problem with this speaker is, it looks like all the tuning is below 50%. So to be fair, I'm gonna, I'm gonna compare these two speakers at 40% because I am comparing Gen 1 to Gen 2. Um, so you will know if you've got Gen 1, should you upgrade? Or should you indeed buy the speaker at all? So for around, well, at 40% volume, Gen 1 versus Gen 2. And it's gonna be both modes, by the way, watch the whole of the comparison. So 40% volume, clear mode. There's a little bit more in the base for Gen 1. Gen 1 also has a bit of a peak there between 600 hertz and 1800 hertz, which isn't in line with that original track. The Gen 2, a little bit more in line with that track, but neither of these speakers are that accurate. And you can see, definitely brighter. We've got to roll off all the way from just below two kilohertz on the original track. We're not seeing that on either of these Dolly catch speakers. Same story in warm mode, still bright at that high end. 2.5 kilohertz peak, which doesn't exist actually. It's a bit of a recess in the original track. And Gen 1, actually, when volume matched, a little bit warmer, a little bit more in the bass until you hit the very deep bass. So Gen 2, for my money, has a little bit more sparkle and, and it does go a bit louder. So if you're just doing a simple A, B, you're going, it's gonna sound a little bit better than it is in reality. The reality is there's a bit, a bit more sparkle. There's a bit more clarity on Gen 2. Um, and if that's what you're after, is it worth spending another 300 quid? But actually a little bit, a little bit warmer on, because it has, doesn't have quite the sparkle. So it's giving you a bit more of the low end, but it, we're talking, tiny, tiny fractions. Overall, it's the, sound, it's the same sound signature. You're only ever going to pick up any differences in a quick AB. But if you go, if you got one speaker and your mate's got the other speaker and you go around his house, it's gonna sound absolutely identical. What about the 70% going by the frequency response measurements? I don't have much hope for this. Me dancing to my own drums.
70% volume. We're still seeing a little bit of a base advantage to the Gen 1 when loudness matched. We are seeing weakness in the mids on that Gen 1. It's a different tuning now. We're seeing a weakness in the mids. We're seeing a boost in the mids on the Gen 1, which is not there on the original track. Again, both of them have the 2.5 kilohertz peak not there on the original track and a boost at the high end not on the original track and completely missing out on the bass, the big bass of that original track, completely missing, albeit in clear mode. If we go to warm mode, it's still missing. There's no bass. There's the upper bass, but by 100 hertz, it's completely rolled off. We're talking about uh, general two against gen one. Yes, there's a little bit more sparkle, as I already said at 40%. But my takeaway from this, other than, you, if you want, if you, if it's all about bass for you, stick with Gen One. If it's all about a bit more detail, a bit more sparkle, go for Gen Two. But it's it, it's thin and brittle to my ears, over fifty percent. Um, amazingly so. This is this is a speaker. But what Hi-Fi? The legends that are what Hi-Fi said is simply the best sound per pound. What do they listen to? I don't know. I mean. It's, it's really hard to understand where they're coming from. You've got to you've got to review these at their price. Um, that would this would sound okay if it was eighty quid, eighty five quid at three hundred. What retail three hundred and thirty pound normally? This speaker to me is sounding thin and brittle, but we're going to do it anyway because you've already started watching the video, and I, I'm 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 in the video as well, so I might as well finish it. Uh, maximum volume. Any difference between Gen One, Gen Two? It's time to go while we're ahead Don't think like that I will love you endlessly If you would only believe Don't you be like that I will love you forever If you don't even believe in me yeah. You could be with anyone I could be with anyone You're here with me
So not much between these two speakers. The basic sound signature is the same, which means when it comes to maximum volume, about the same depending on the mode. Whether you're in clear mode or warm mode, Gen 1, Gen 2 will basically go as loud as each other. If you look at clear mode, yellow and green, they do have the deepest bass. So-called clear mode has the most bass because so-called warm mode is pushing the mid and upper bass. It's Gen 1 that does show it has the most in that bass. Not by much, maybe half a decibel there, but it definitely has had the advantage in the bass all the way through all the testing. It does have the strongest mids, unnatural mids. We're still seeing that at maximum volume. So in terms of absolute headroom, there's no change really between Gen 1 and Gen 2. There's just a little bit of tweaking in the overall tuning. The smallest, tiniest fraction louder on Gen 2 in my personal measurements. The biggest difference I found was in the peak. Already said there's a bit more spark, a bit more clarity. Whereas that one favors a bit more bass which means I've got um, a peak 105.6 decibels compared to 104 decibels. That's about the biggest difference between these two speakers I managed all the way along. Otherwise, to all intents and purposes, they are the same speaker with minute differences. And the other thing they have in common is, which you probably, well, may or may not, but if you were listening closely, you'd hear, the pumping. You get near maximum volume. It wasn't happening at lower volumes, but it's unforgivable. It was doing it on Gen 1, it's still doing it on Gen 2, it's pumping. Pumping in and out. Uh, that wasn't the, the the most bass heavy track in the world. Uh, and it and it's, makes it completely unlistenable because it's so, so annoying. It's unforgivable at the price level. We go over the actual differences. They're both made in China. They do have a bigger battery now in the Gen 2, 24 watt hours. It's, it's not a game changer, 24 watt hours is what I would expect. They had an 18.7 watt hours uh, in the original. It's, as we already said, Aptex HD now, if your device supports it, but it was only Aptex uh, on the uh, original. It is now Bluetooth 5, it used to be Bluetooth 4. Uh, the other difference is you can you can pair two of them. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if, if you believe, well, I'm not, it's not only what Hi-Fi, I, I hear that a lot of people, I, I thought this was gonna be a great sound speaker. I, a lot of people tell me, uh, you know, it's a great sounding speaker. They do notably say at low volumes, but oh, come on, below, above 50% already, it's a different sounding speaker. But yeah, you can do stereo pairing uh, on the on the uh, Gen 2. You can't do that on Gen 1, and you can't pair the two of them together. Uh, it, it does have, if this is a big deal, it does have, not only that you can use it as a power bank, it does have an auxiliary input, woohoo! That's almost a big deal, but you know, it's got to first and foremost, it's got to give me value for money, and it's not there as far as I'm concerned on this speaker. It's slightly heavier, one at uh, 1187 grams on the Gen 2 compared to 1147 grams. Not IP, not IPX rated at all, not even on the Gen 2. Where, where's that money going? It's going to the geezers who are doing the design, and we're going to make it look really beautiful. And that's really what these lifestyle speakers are all about. Look, it looks nice, because at the end of the day, even, the, look, you've only got to knock it a little bit, and that's a gunner. You wouldn't want that on a cliff edge, would you? Just make it a bit chunky. I don't really understand that. I don't really understand the, you know, I guess it's just like people who buy artwork for millions of quid. Is it because it's investment? Or do they really think it's, they look at it and they're getting millions of pounds worth of enjoyment? It's just I just think it's marketing getting caught up in the hype, and people thinking yes, I've got I've got me got myself a dirty catch, and they just leave it on that. Probably never even listen to it. They just say the mates come round, and they say wow, look at he got enough four those speakers. He he must be rolling in it. We already said two ninety millimeter front to back uh, configuration, ninety millimeter woofers. 21 millimeter tweeters. I can hear you already getting excited. Two passive radiators. Uh, what I will say is, very, very good Bluetooth, both of them, for Gen 1, Gen 2. 
50 milliseconds. That's that's as good as it gets in my testing uh, for Bluetooth latencies. But very but that's in my testing. It is device specific. You won't be able to uh, do anything in the app because there's no app for it. But we've got an EQ button right on the speaker itself. So th there's a takeaway. As far as I'm concerned, that's that ranks with the Sonus Rome um, as leading contenders for pound for pound worst value uh, there's ever been. For my money, that's an 80 pound speaker. Um, in terms of sound, uh, I really don't get that tuning at all. It's capable, there is deep bass there, but it becomes disjointed about 50% because you're missing a lot of the mid bass. So it, is, it reminds me a lot of the, um, the Bang & Olufsen, Olufsen A1. Can, can do uh, deep bass, but because it becomes disjointed, there's not enough above the deep bass that uh, it it's it's, doesn't make that much difference. So, look, if, if you were interested, and I couldn't really see any comparisons out there, Gen 1 versus Gen 2. If you love Gen 1, you'll love Gen 2, and now you can get two of them if you're crazy enough and, and pair them in stereo. But if you've never had either of them and, you just, and you've just heard, like I have, reports saying, what a great sounding speaker. Look, I'm giving you my opinion. It's my ears. I'm not saying it's a terrible speaker my, because it's my opinion. But the measurement suggests that's not great. My ears say one of the worst in terms of value for money I've ever heard. Can you enjoy listening? Like I said, for most of these speakers, if it's your only speaker, you'll probably en really enjoy it and think it's great. Only when you start getting references uh, for, between different speakers and your ears become attuned to what's right and what's wrong, then you become a bit more fussy like I've become. So, you know, it, with all the references that I now have, for a speaker costing 330 quid, doesn't give me the smile factor. It doesn't give me, yeah, it's gonna, I'm gonna pick up the Dolly Catch now. I'm, no, I'll still pick up the likes of the Motion Boom and several others because I'll just enjoy them. So, what does it do? Well, let me say something. What it does do is it gives you a big open sound. It is, the sound is bigger than the enclosure. There is a sense of left and right. And that's all good. It's just too thin and brittle. But hey ho, if you're only listening at low volumes and you're listening below 50%, then I would say, yeah, it's probably worth 300 quid. If, if you're looking for a hi-fi type of uh, sound, clarity and detail, um, a sophisticated kind of sound, yes. But, oh, come on, it's got to go about 50% of the volume, isn't it, for a 50-watt 50, 50 speaker. So, well, that's been my video. I hope you got something out of it, and I hope to see you in another video. I ain't got that life. I ain't got that life. I ain't a project wife. Got my logic right, cause I'm not your type. I ain't got that life. I ain't got that life. Sorry, my I ain't get it right. I'ma just live my life. I ain't about that. I ain't about that life, uh